Content warning, we now return to the regular scheduled programming, which means there will be lots and lots of swearing. <laughs> hey you, Lauren Southern, go the fuck back to where you came from. Or should I say Alu Akbar, because apparently you can't tell the difference between Australian English and Arabic, which I will get to, but certainly highlights your extreme levels of ignorance. For listeners who don't know who Lauren Southern is, she's an ultra right-wing hack Canadian, which I didn't even know existed, who makes a living off spreading fear and chastising Muslims. And I say that very deliberately. She chastises Muslims. So allow me to elaborate. Those who know me and anybody listening to this episode in the future would know that I'm no friend to religion. I have a particular disdain for the Abrahamic religions, so that means Christianity, Judaism, and yes, Islam. But a religion is not a person. Despite what many, even in those religions, believe, no religion ever completely defines a person. Their philosophy, ideals, and moral convictions may be heavily inspired by their faith, but you only have to look at the several thousand sects of Christianity to know that there is a massive disparity among believers. And more often than not, it's a person's own morality that guides what parts of their religion that they buy into, not the other way around. I'm not going to walk up to some random Catholic on the street and demand they repent for the persecution of Galileo, or have them arrested for diddling kids because that seems to be a favourite pastime of some of their most prominent clergymen. And I don't immediately launch in a debate with that person about abortion rights the second they tell me they're a Christian. People are people, and their adherence to their beliefs varies from person to person for a variety of different reasons. And at the end of the day, a person's religion is, and again, religious people may disagree with me, not their identity. The Pope is not a Christianity. Drake is not a Judaism. Australian commentator Walid Ali is not an Islam. Each of these people would tell you a very different story about their experience with their faith as someone who lived a 10-minute walk away. The United States, Ireland, Brazil, Mexico, all have same-sex marriage rights despite a strong presence of Christianity in their populace and government. Yet Uganda, another Christian-majority country, has laws making homosexuality punishable by seven years to death, depending on who you are and who you fuck. And the strong push to continue to make the laws even harsher continues. Yet my LGBT friends don't have to cross the street when they walk past a church in Brisbane, because despite being the same religion, with the same books, the same doctrine, the culture here is different. The beliefs of the individual people here are different. Lauren Southern calls herself a critic of Islam, yet she travels the world trying to declare that every Muslim is just another component of ISIS, that if you get enough of them together, some secret embedded code will activate in their brain and they'll start waving AK-47s in the air, shouting Allahu Akbar and taking the nearest uncovered woman as a sex slave. No, Lauren, that is not an attack on a set of ideas. That is an attack on people. That is an offence to a person. You are doing this all wrong. Now, it's not that we don't have a problem already with Islamophobia in Australia. And by the way, that is such a misnomer. To me, the word speaks to Islam. The problem we have in Australia is a fear and hatred of Muslims. Now, generally speaking, among the general population of white Australians who have never knowingly interact with the Muslim beyond eyeing a burqa-clad woman suspiciously as she walks down the street, there is at most a sense of suspicion. And to be honest, I understand. The only time we hear the word Islam mentioned in the mainstream media is when some fanatic has committed a suicide bombing or turned another Syrian town into rubble. But we do have a serious threat. The real meat of the problem exists in a small group, mostly consisting of lower class Southern Cross tattoo VB swilling degenerates known colloquially as bogans, as well as the Cubs or cashed up bogans. Their ideals are fueled on by people like Pauline Hansen, who 20 years ago was harping on about Asian immigration but has now found a new scapegoat for insecurities about the fact that she looks like the Michael Jackson robot from the movie Moonwalker, who ran a campaign that halal certification funded terrorism and that Islam was a disease that Australia needs to vaccinate. Lucky for all Australians, Pauline Hansen is a joke that had a second win much like Rick Astley's Never Gonna Give You Up because we kind of miss her cheesy lines and easy target for humour. But the Rick Roll is starting to get old. The only people who still pay attention to her are the ultra right-wing lunatics and even they are starting to lose a bit of their steam. So we're doing fine here, thanks. We already have a problem and we're kind of dealing with it. What we don't need is foreign intervention by a social media queen coming into this country and whipping these shitheads back into a frenzy. We don't need Lauren Southern here. We don't want Lauren Southern here. And with the exception of a minority of extremists, dare I say it, terrorists, she is not welcome here. Even among the aforementioned average middle class white naive Australians, we don't want foreigners of any creed, colour or origin to come here and stir shit up. Trying to stir up the hate, and worse, trying to recruit more hate, with her tales of woe from other countries, the calamities she has seen in Rotterdam or in Austria or in Sweden, or just name a place that allows people to flee from certain death. 
But if her reporting on social media of how her trip to the diverse town of Lakemba when is any indication as to her integrity, then any evidence she purports on the ills of Islamic community should be taken with a grain of sodium cyanide salt. And did I say diverse? Well, Lakemba has a large mosque and a 52% Muslim population. So according to Southern, a Sharia-run hellscape the likes of modern-day Aleppo. So a funny thing happened on the way to Damascus, or as Lauren Southern would imagine it to be. She recorded a video of her walking through Lakemba, prefacing it first with a short video describing how she's heard some disturbing things, calling it a no-go zone and a very high Muslim population area. Not sure what scale you're working on there, but whatever. Also, how do you get plosive sounds through a screened microphone held half a meter from your face? Just curious. Not relevant at all, but I can sit here with my nose practically on this microphone with nothing but a thin pop filter and I'm fine. What are you exhaling the equivalent of a Category 5 cyclone when you speak so that when you close your mouth for 5 milliseconds it builds up the pressure of a small nuclear bomb? Anyway, she claims she's going to go on the ground and check it out. And if you think that's actually what is going to happen here, you haven't been paying attention. First thing she claims is that things were tense. People were looking at her. Well, lady... You've got a microphone, a cameraman, and according to you, a small security posse. You would attract attention pretty much anywhere. And then there were shots of mostly people pretty much not looking at her. And then she claims that people were yelling at her in Arabic across the street. Let's put a pin in that one for a few seconds. And then apparently she's accosted by the media. So there is this cameraman belonging to I don't know who, and local crime reporter Eliza Barr filming on her pink jewel-encrusted smartphone. Sorry, Lauren, despite your repeated claims to the opposite, not related. And who is Eliza Barr specifically? Well, put a pin in that one as well, because it gets real fucking hilarious. So Southern skips the confrontation she had with Eliza Barr. Thankfully, Eliza uploaded her video, again taken with a smartphone, onto her page for the delight of all of us to see. Southern makes a whole bunch of easily falsifiable and ultimately false claims. First, she mistakes Lakamba for Cronulla. Cronulla, which is famous for race riots when a gang of white supremacists beat the living shit out of a couple of Muslim boys and a bunch of people from the local Muslim community turned up to get revenge. A spillover in racial tensions to be sure, but we have conservative radio hoax, (coughs) sorry, host Alan Jones to thank for that one. You could hardly point the finger squarely at the Muslim community for that. Again, this was in Cronulla, half an hour drive away without traffic. The only thing that happened at Lakamba is that the mosque was patrolled by police who feared that a bunch of white boys would turn up and torch the place. Mostly because a bunch of white boys had threatened to turn up and torch the place. No riots happened in Lakamba. Oh, but before that, she says it doesn't look like Australia here. To which my response was a resounding and literal, fuck you. What the fuck do you think Australia looks like? Desert and kangaroos? Go for a walk anywhere around Sydney and the streetscape will look pretty much freaking identical. Except the shops might be selling something slightly different and there will be less Arabic writing. But a lot of Arabic speaking people live in Lakemba, so what the fuck do you expect? I live in an inner city suburb in Brisbane. I can walk down the road and there is a strip mall of shops which feature Korean writing. But it still looks like fucking Australia to me. And then she has the nerve to call it a monoculture. Well, I think the local Bangladeshis, Lebanese, Pakistanis and Indians would beg to differ that their cultures are all the same. And yes, Pakistanis and Indian. There is a Pakistani and Indian restaurant side by side across the road from where she is. And the fact they're not hurling tiny nuclear bombs across a fence at each other is a pretty sure sign of peaceful integration, don't you think? And then she asks, do you see any British pubs around? To which Eliza points out that she's standing across the street from one. Of course, the pub was the source of all the yelling. It was a bunch of white Australian men yelling at her from a British pub across the street, which she mistook for Arabic. So again, fuck you. To be so ignorant that you can mistake Australian English for Arabic, go fuck yourself. Of course, she doesn't correct this in her own video, so thanks again, Eliza, for clearing that one up for us. And then she goes into crime, which I looked into. And Eliza, if you ever listen to this and make it this far through the crude language, please correct me. But Lakamba has crime rates below the state average on all fronts. It's his 41st out of 139 electorates in the lowest crime statistics, which is pretty good for an area where the average household income is half that of the state average. And contrary to what race baiters would have you believe, it has one of the lowest sexual assault rates in the state. So it sounds like a pretty fucking safe place to me. Better than average at worst. And who do local businesses complain about when it comes to crime? Teenagers. Perhaps we should kick all the children out of the country until they reach 20 years old. Might make Lacambra an even safer place. And then she tries to single out the LGBT community as victims, which she keeps coming back to because she has pretty much nothing else to run on here. 
And I have to admit, she's got me on this one here. I have no idea how welcome the LGBT community would be in Lakemba. But by the same token, try walking through one of the majority Christian areas of Australia while holding hands with someone of the same sex and see how well that goes down. Maybe I'll send you one of the pamphlets distributed around the majority Christian community of Bannalong calling homosexuality the curse of death. Where is your video on Bannalong? Not a hell of a lot of people speak English there either. And then comes the kicker. The point where I got to take a break from yelling fuck you at the screen and got to spend a few minutes trying to stop laughing my ass off. Because then she shifts her attention to Eliza's job. Apparently, she can't say anything because she's the mainstream media. Her tongue is tied. She has a whole lot of bureaucracy to go through and they wouldn't allow her to publish anything against Islam. Then without prompting, Eliza hits back in a very matter-of-fact tone of voice. I work for News Corp. News Corp, the right-wing conservative news conglomeration owned by Rupert Murdoch, the same guy that owns Fox News, the same corporation that got railed not two weeks earlier for advertising Lauren Southern's appearances in Australia. You could not find a hive mind of more despicable right-wing bias in the media without moving into Breitbart territory. And when News Corp comes along to call you out on being too far right-wing, you know you done fucked up. And Eliza, you are still my favourite person of the day. Then having admitted defeat in her efforts to extract a single intelligible thought from this moron, Eliza lets her get along her way. So we return to Southern's video, with no mention of the media confrontation that took place, other than to claim that she was told it was a perfectly safe place and that they were about to be proven wrong. Because Officer Alf Stewart turns up to have a word. Now, I didn't quite catch the guy's real name, and apparently he's pretty high-ranking among the Canterbury Police Department. But that's Canterbury. It's like saying you're the king of the lemonade stands on Wall Street. That's Wall Street in the middle of buttfuck nowhere, not Wall Street, New York. And I mean that in no way to belittle Officer Alf or his job. But this is a man who, despite the challenges of his daily job, doesn't usually have to deal with the pretentious foreign social media shitheads like Lawrence Southern. And that is his skill in itself. So among the backdrop of a local Christian church, Officer Alf attempts to avoid upsetting the local community that he is there to protect and serve, not provocative Canadian shitheads, by not allowing her to intentionally provoke them. Then we come back to her claims that she is a critic of Islam. No, you are not, Lauren. You are a provocateur. I, evidently in agreement with Officer Alf here, am rather of the conviction that you would have hung around and made a scene until you provoked a reaction that would give you some kind of camera fodder to show all your nasty buddies worldwide. Then Officer Alf did what all the Officer Alfs out there should do. His fucking job. He protected the peace. He prevented people from being perturbed just trying to go about their day. And then said what most of Australia is thinking. You're not welcome. You're not welcome in Lakamba. You're not welcome in Sydney. You're not welcome in Melbourne. And after saying that Melbourne should be nuked because they didn't agree with your xenophobic views, you sure as fuck are not welcome in Brisbane. Get the fuck out. And I realise the irony that I'm speaking out against nationalism by telling a foreign national to get the fuck out. But I'm not telling all Canadians to get out. I'm not telling all Christians to get out. I'm not telling all blonde women to get out. I'm telling you to get out, Lauren. Because you have proven yourself to be a person who doesn't respect Australian values. You have proven yourself to be a threat to the Australian way of life. Not even for a visit. Go. Telling you that you just can't walk up to a random person and start insulting their way of life apropos of nothing isn't Sharia law. It's Australian law because we don't do that shit here. Go the fuck back to whatever white trash redneck hole you crawled out of. And to all the Australians out there, I offer this Arabic phrase, which I'll probably butcher. Salam alaikum. Peace be upon you. Mm-hmm. <laughs>